Hello Dragons, my name is Ross Lamond. I'm the founder of Bug Bakes and I'm asking for £50,000 in exchange for 10% of my business. My product is Simple Baked Treats for Dogs and it's the UK's first to use insect protein instead of livestock, which it might surprise you to learn is a very good thing to be doing. And that's because pet food makes up a significant part of the total impact from the meat industry, which is itself one of the most environmentally damaging practices on the planet. Farming insects, on the other hand, provides the exact same nutrition while having a fraction of the environmental impact. I had the idea for this while I was at university. I've spent the last two years creating, extensively testing and selling my product, and I'm convinced it is the future of pet food. Thank you all very much for your time. I will welcome any questions, but first, would you please come and help yourself to a bag of our treats from Max here? Oh. Dog treats made from insects is the business idea Ross Lamond is hoping will fly with the dragons. Good boy. He's offering a 10% equity stake in his company in return for a £50,000 investment. Oh, he found I've got this it. Spot. I've got, I know, I've got very good dog packaging <laughs> fingernails. And it appears Max the demo dog has almost closed the deal already. This is where I just say, have my money. Yeah. <laughs> Tej Lalvani is first to quiz the young entrepreneur and he wants to know about the bugs that are the basis of his business. Hi, Ross. Hi. So, what type of insects do you use? I use crickets. Just crickets? Well, cricket flour. So that brown powder there, if you can see on the table, that's cricket flour. And dogs eating bugs, is it a big market? More than dogs eating bugs, uh, environmentally friendly pet food is a big market. So for the first time ever, one in three people in the UK fall into the category of either being vegan, vegetarian or flexitarian, which means one in three people actively reduce or eliminate meat from their diet. So right now, where are you selling? Uh, so I sell online and through about 40 retail shops. Are you finding them literally one by one, talking to them and mm. selling your product, or are you selling through a distributor? Actually, the shops find me. I've stopped approaching them. So in the last year, I've had about 20 shops stock me just because they heard about me through word of mouth. So what's your most often sold product? Uh, it would be the subscription bag. Yeah. At the moment, I've got 60, and I've been only advertising it for three months. So last month, how many signed up? Uh, last month, 20 signed up. Right, so it's got a bit of traction, but it's, it's got not... a bit of traction. I'm yet to really advertise, and I've spent two years validating that dogs like them, owners are willing to buy them, and the market's there, and I believe all of that's true. And the reason I'm here is I think this is a ready-to-scale product. Despite a spirited defence of his achievements to date, Deborah Meaden discovers the entrepreneur's subscription service has yet to take off. Ross's dream dragon, Sarah Davies, seemed a little squeamish about his product initially, but it appears she's warming to his cricket-based creations. Right. I really like you, I like the product, I like the story, but then I was a little bit worried about the numbers. What's the dream, what's the ambition? I think I've just been limited by the only kind of marketing I've been doing is word of mouth by turning up to markets and events. The demand, I think, is definitely there for a product like this. I don't think enough people know about this to say, um, it's selling itself. Ross, the last 12 months, what did you turn over? Uh, just under £10,000. So it is very much a startup. I'm actually going into the dog business, not, not in this area, but, it, but in more toys. One part of me says, do I need to widen my horizon? The investment would be for machines? Yes, or... so there's a machine called a rotary molder machine, mm -hmm. which. Um, means instead of having to roll out biscuits, I think I've rolled out about 350,000 biscuits by hand, which is horrible. And what, what does that cost? It costs about £21,000. And premises? I'm looking to keep it in-house just for the very short term. In-house meaning what? In, in the, your house? In the family home. So is this quite a family affair? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure my mum's put more labels on packets than she wanted. But what concerns me is you've got to go a long way to do any real turnover. You know, there should be more. Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm going to cry for you. The entrepreneur reveals a home-based business with mum manning the production line, which is currently only just moving in first gear. But it appears Peter Jones now wants to discuss one of his common bugbears, the valuation Ross has placed on his company. So, sales in the last 12 months has been about £10,000? Just under, yeah. You currently value the business at 50 times Hmm. Turnover. Mm -hmm. Is there a business 
that you believe that could ever get that sort of valuation? Uh, <laughs> I appreciate this is at the higher end of um, valuations. The reason I put it there is I've been informally approached by some high wealth individuals who've expressed an interest in investing and that's the valuation that they've put to me. So how much have they invested then? No one else has invested. I've just had, I've just had either first meetings or telephone conversations. Sorry, I thought you said that they said that they valued the business at 50 times its They earnings. expressed an interest in investing and they put, they put forward... An investment of 50 times and you didn't bite their arm off? Well, uh, so I had my first meeting with one of them a week ago. Seriously, if you have any inkling that that is a possibility, mm -hmm. you need to take their money very quickly. And if they continue to invest at that level, they won't be high net worth individuals for very long. Have you spoken to some of the bigger players that might be able to buy volume? I was recently approached by Pets at Home, who asked to place a test order. But that was a few weeks ago and I've not heard back. Have they placed an order? No, I don't know why, to be honest with you. And did you call them? Yep. And what did they say? No explanation. So I didn't get through to the exact bank. The person I phoned didn't know who I was and... Uh, got to keep pushing though. Yeah, I, I definitely will. I'm not going to just leave <laughs> it there. It's got to keep banging on yep. that door until one of them gives you the order. Yeah, I will do that. But there's a disconnect for me, is that you've spent two years of your life doing this and yet you don't seem to have that, that tenacious punch. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll admit, the last two years sales haven't been my main focus. So you'll be the best kept secret. I mean, that's almost barking mad. Isn't it? It's, it's crazy that you haven't done that. Uh, in, yes. Why? Uh, uh, I was... I, I, mm. You're demonstrating, actually, that at the moment it's uninvestable. So that's the reason why I'm out. The entrepreneur's apparent reluctance to push his product is a frustration for Peter Jones, and he ends his interest. Before he entered the den, Ross was hoping Sarah Davies might be able to help him take over the world with his eco treats, but it appears she's more inclined to bring him back down to earth. You really had me until you uttered those words, sales haven't been my main focus. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, you've just lost me there. No. What can possibly be your main focus if it's not sales? You know, when I started my business, I spent a lot of time working on research and development, but your focus has got to be those sales. It really has. And honestly, I was really keen to invest, but I ju you've just lost me there. It's not for me. I'm out. Ross, I don't agree with that. I think you're right not to push sales at the moment, because actually your resistance is insects. <laughs> what? I thought you said resistance in sex. <laughs> I don't, perhaps I need to say that <laughs> again. You haven't sold because you're resistant to sex. That's your problem. Right. Thanks, Deborah, for that. It's resistance to insects. Yes. Because if you go to the mainstream retailers right now, with no demonstration whatsoever that anybody is going to buy a pet product made of insects, they are going to say, forget it. And there's a second problem to this. This is a treat. This is not dog food. So it kind of tackles the problem from the wrong end. Because if my dog's eating meat, what's the point in me saying, actually, the few treats that I give him are insect-based? It just feels like the tail wagging the dog. And I don't, I, I don't do the puns. The pun master sits on the end down there. Oh, there's everything I love about this. My heart says, oh, I would love to. But my head says it's a long way off. So I'm really sorry, Ross. I can't see it's a good investment right now, so I won't be investing. I'm out. Ross. What I'm a little bit disappointed in is your initiative to sell the product. I'll, I'll admit I don't claim to be a well-rounded business person yet. Um, it's not about being a well-rounded business person. I think you've got a good head on you, mm -hmm. but the problem is that you're not hungry for sales. So good luck with it. Thank you very much. But I'm out. The entrepreneur's missing zest to sell his product is leading to the dragons losing their appetite to invest, as Tej Lalvani becomes the fourth 
to pass on the proposition. Only Tuka Suleiman remains. Will he choose to expand his dog-related business portfolio? Hi, Ross. Hello. Whew. The grilling. Is it Gomez plant? Um, I wouldn't say so. Look, I'm torn on this one because I, I am in the dog business. Yeah. If there is a business, yeah. I'd like to invest. However, I don't know that. Hold on, isn't our job in here in the den to establish whether or not we think there's a business to invest in? But that's up to me, but not up to you. Thank you. I'm just talking things through. Am I allowed to do that? You just need to make him an offer not subject to finding out if he's got a business. Well, I, I can make any offer I want. He can take it or leave it. So, going back, um, I don't really know whether there's a business here. But I wouldn't find out. But the evaluation is crazy for a £10,000 tell of a business. It's a tiny business. I would offer you all the money, but I want 50%, so we're equal partners. Do you want to think about it? Uh, yeah, I'll have a think. Thank yeah. you. Tuka Suleiman locks horns with Deborah Meaden, then makes a play for the bug-based business. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Just needs a bit of drive. But the dragon's audacious demand of 50% of Ross's company is way more than the 10% he's willing to give away. I think he's going to do it. I've had a think about it. Um, I think at this time I'll decline your offer as I think I will be able to get that £50,000 for less equity. But, but, but you have to understand, before you say no to me, right, is that it's what I can bring to the party. I will accelerate you so fast you won't even know. I'll be completely honest, I came in here with a red line and 50% is way above it. Mm -hmm. Would you be open to any kind of clawback of equity if I was able to get your money back within a time frame? Well, if you got me money back within 12 months, I'd go down to 40%. Any farther than that? That's it. 35% I would shake with the clawback. In 12 months? Hmm. You're, for somebody who doesn't sell, you're a tough negotiator. I love the way you look me in the eye. You've got a deal. Hey. <laughs> Okay. Good work. Thank you all very right. much. Okay, we, we'll, we'll do something with this. Yeah. Okay? Great, Ross. Okay. Thanks. Thank you all for your time. Congratulations. Well, well done. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Well, yeah. done. well done. Well done. I'll buy some. The confident entrepreneur holds out for better terms, and Tuka Suleiman reduces his demands and bags a deal. Ross heads back to Fife with the £50,000 he was seeking and an experienced dragon on board with the business. I'm absolutely exhausted. That was one of the most intense things I've ever done. I see why they're called dragons. <laughs> I got roasted. Fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. I've got to give him a good shake to wake him up. He needs a rocket up his behind is what he needs. Well, if it doesn't work, you'll have a lot of bugs to eat. <laughs>